Thank you so much. It's Christina and Delino Chan. Uh, we're going to introduce the whole Earth Codec today. So the project, broadly speaking, looks at this sort of increasing um, use of artificial intelligence in the analysis and management of ecosystems. Um, and this is something based on how things are going that we see as something that's increasingly going to um, be a sort of reality in the future moving forward. So what our project is, is it's a sort of speculative design uh, that attempts to sort of uh, stimulate conversations around what this means, the increasing mediation of ecosystems by artificial intelligence before it's actually a uh, reality. So to try to, rather than have thought follow in reflection, follow after implementation, try to reverse engineer those. So this is a speculative design that we kind of present as if it's real, but it's more thought of as like a discursive object for stimulating conversation. Um, and it becomes clear that the sort of difference between having these future be quite extractive versus a more regenerative one is something that really hinges on questions of governance and ownership, and so that's what we're researching. So just to give some context, um, what we're talking about here today is trying to move beyond the voice as a mode of representation. So in 1993, um, Bruno Latour introduced the idea of the Parliament of Things, um, which was a sort of hypothetical way of sort of representing the interests of non-human entities in human decision-making systems. So he writes, in the Parliament of Things, natures are present, but with their representatives, scientists who speak in their names. Let one of the representatives talk, for instance, about the ozone hole, another represent Monsanto, a third the workers of the same chemical industry, and so on. So we're really indebted to this line of thinking and a lot of the work that's been introduced in the last few days in terms of representation and listenership, et cetera. But what we want to sort of speculate about is, and draw attention to is the way in which these, um, this sort of centrality of the, the metaphor of the voice in a lot of these discussions um, and the ways in which a lot of these discussions rely on a um, human spokesperson to be the vehicle through which um, this knowledge of nature is sort of passed through. Um, and so in the 30 years since uh, Latour first introduced this concept, there's been sort of a pr proliferation of lots of different modalities and informatic modalities through which information about ecosystems and the biosphere are recorded that move far beyond sort of an auditory or like vocal register. So through LIDAR or genomic information or a wide variety of climate simulations, the Earth is sort of, um, there's a lot of different modalities that we want to sort of, that we want to sort of point to here. Um, and already a lot of these um, sort of different modalities of information are being used to create synthetic representations of the planet or ecosystems in the form of models or simulations. But to date, as far as we know, um, these simulations remain like quite limited in scope and aren't necessarily integrating the sort of more recent paradigms in AI, specifically foundation models. And so that's what we will talk about today. And our research question is sort of asking how might recent advancements in machine learning enable a more complex representational logic that moves beyond the voice. So thinking of the model itself as a representational form. Uh, yeah. Well, so like Connor said, we have a lot of sensing of, of, of the planet, but next to sensing, you also, like, it's intertwined with cognition. So how can we process all this information? So currently, the par dominant paradigm in machine learning is that of the foundation model. So these are, of which something like GPT-4 is an example. So they, they're sort of massive in terms of data set and parameters, which you can kind of think of as, like, number of dimensions that the model has to characterize something, and they have a more general scope rather than being trained to do a, f a particular task. Um, they're trained via unsupervised learning, meaning that the data is not actually deliberately labeled, but um, the models kind of statistically learns patterns inherent to the corpus. They are capable of demonstrating all of these like emergent capabilities, so in such as translation in the case of LLMs. And finally, they can be considered a base, so thus foundation for models that are fine-tuned on particular downstream tasks. 
So foundation models have kind of allowed us to manipulate information in a new way, yet its abilities have kind of been focused on what can be scraped, what humans are interested in, aka the internet. So something like 85% of GPT-3's training data is internet data. And we think that, you know, however, there's just so much more data about the planet that is privatized, not aggregated, not digitized, not recorded, or not even like deigned to be looked at. Um, and we think that we really need to basically widen the aperture of what these models look at beyond just human data. And, you know, and instead like widen what machine intelligence currently pays attention to. So currently there's vast information about the planet in the form of energy particles, waves and fields. So all of these different stimuli are kind of transduced currently by biological sensors or synthetic ones and changed into electric data, um, electric signals and becomes data. So what if we took ecological data in all these disparate forms and sort of integrated it into a single knowledge architecture. Um, you know, what currently imperceptible patterns might encoding the entire biosphere reveal? So this is sort of the basic premise for the Whole Earth Codec. It's a planetary scale foundation model that we, that we propose is trained on multimodal ecological data. And then the key idea, idea here is that the model is able to make cross-modal representations and associations in its latent space and basically detect previously unknown insights about the planet as an interconnected whole. Um, so yesterday we talked a little bit about how models are essentially performing lossy compression word of the day. Um, but basically, it's performing lossy compression of the entire data set, but, you know, hence the name codec. But we're sort of trying to make the point that it's actually through the process of compression that you're able to take, like, a massive body of data that is basically previously incomprehensible, and you can make it into a form in which the general contours are more visible and you are able to finally derive meaning from it. So with this planetary scale knowledge architecture as a base, we sort of suggest that maybe it can serve perhaps as an interface for a translation between various human, non-human ways of viewing the planet, and that this medium offers an alternative to sort of the previous anthropocentric ways of figuring representation, and yeah, how can we include non-human perspectives in a different way? So we've come up with a future scenario. Um, we've thought through a few use cases and uh, as a way to speculate upon the codex future effects. The one, the one we have chosen for today is around whale communication. So, Imagine it's 2031, and scientists train a fine-tuned version of the codec on vast amounts of multimodal data <clears throat> concerning whale behavior. The model becomes capable of interpreting whale speech into human language. The world is captivated. Initial footage reveals, oh, sorry, initial findings reveal um, complex social structures, emotional depth, and even elements of what could be termed as whale culture. Audio recordings of translated whale songs find their ways into TikToks, DJ sets, and pop songs. Conservationists and animal activists champion the development, assuming that this will lead to increased empathy and will cause a broader societal shift towards increased animal welfare. Others condemn this as an exploitative violation of whale privacy. Do humans have a right to decode and interpret whale speech without their consent? Entrepreneurial companies capitalize on this shift 
developing generative models and underwater hydrophones, which broadcast synthetic whale vocalizations in an attempt to talk back to whales. Whale communication experiences become hot and are a tourism factor and are, and, and this tourism booms, right? Um, leading to increased marine traffic causing stress on whale populations. Communication is often unsuccessful, suggesting there is something fundamental outside of the scope of the model. Regardless, synthetic vocalizations begin to profoundly alter whale migration patterns and breeding behaviors, leading to unpredictable transformations in ecosystems and food chains. This mediation of the biosphere through pattern recognition and machinic comprehension, compression, sorry, machinic compression, brings about unpredictable knock-on effects. Several animal rights groups advocate for a codec improvement proposal in order to design a way to include a mechanism to calculate stakeholder share for non-human actors involved in the ecosystem. So, we are proposing this, so the open session we'll be having today is to think through how non-human representation may be viable through machinic intelligence. How do we fundamentally shift from our current extractive paradigm to a paradigm informed by scales of ecological relations and responsibilities? And we invite you all to come. Thank you.